Okay, good day to all of you. So before we start our first lesson, so uh, I want to give credits to the uh, material that I've used for this presentation. So this is from Mastering Arduino by Jan Hoffman. Okay, so let's start our discussion. So the first chapter is all about the Arduino. So what is Arduino? So uh, maybe that's your question in mind, but then later on, so we're going to discuss what really is Arduino. Okay, in this chapter, you will learn what the Arduino boards are, how to power the Arduino boards, what Arduino shields are, what the pins on the Arduino boards do, and learn about generic and compatible Arduino boards. So first and foremost, so let's discuss about the history of the Arduino. So how did uh, uh, the board um, came up with its name, which is Arduino? So in 2003, Hernando Baragan started working on a project called Wiring for his master thesis at the Interaction Design Institute Ivrea or IDII in Italy. At that time, students used a microcontroller board that cost US dollars, which is composed of um, actually $100, 100 US dollars. So in the Philippines, it is equivalent to approximately 5,000 pesos in Philippine peso and needed additional hardware and software to use. Uh, Massimo Banzi and Casey Reyes, who is known for work on the processing language, were supervisors for his thesis. So the name of his um, um, project for his thesis is called Wiring, Prototyping Physical Interaction Design. Uh, the first prototype used uh, the Parallax Javelin Stamp Microcontroller, which used a subset of the Java programming language. And then after that, there is a second prototype that used uh, the Atmel ARM-based 91R4008 microcontroller. And then we have the third prototype used the Atmel 80Mega128 microcontroller with the Maverick microcontroller board. He used a tool written by Brian Dan called the AVR Dude to easily upload new programs to the board. And then FTDI, um, FTDI is Future Technology Devices International. This is a semiconductor company uh, which specifically specializes in um, USB technology. So he used the hardware uh, for the USB to serial communication because it had an easy to obtain drivers for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS platforms. And then in 2004, the IDII ordered and paid for 25 wiring circuit boards. So these boards were manufactured by SERP. They included the Atmega128 microcontroller, the FTDI USB to serial hardware, onboard LED connected to a pin, and serial RXTX LEDs. And then because of his... Um, distinction and of all uh, his um, success after graduation uh, with distinction in 2004, Hernando moved back to his native Colombia to teach at the Universidad de los Andes where he continues to work on wiring. And then in May 2005, Hernando ordered 200 circuit boards and began assembling the first wiring boards outside of IDII. He sold these boards for approximately 60 US dollars. And then by the end of 2005, wiring was being used in various parts of the world. Um, uh, it is very popular because uh, microcontrollers at that time is very expensive. And for only 60 US dollars, you could already have a microcontroller that you can use for your projects. And then also in 2005, the first Arduino board was created. The Arduino board used the less expensive 80 Mega 128 microcontroller to reduce cost. And then the Arduino team forked the wiring code. Okay, the, we have the term forked. Um, fork is used for open source platforms, uh, meaning, for example, um, if it is an open source platform, you're going to duplicate its design 
and then you're going to customize it for your own needs. So uh, the term is called fork for open source application. This is typic uh, typically used for open source platforms. And then added support for this board. So the initial Arduino core team consisted of Massimo Banzi, David Quartielis, Tom Igoeg, Gianluca Martino, and David Melis. And then unfortunately, Hernando was not invited to participate in this project. And then the Arduino team strongly believed in open source hardware and software. They believed that by opening the platform up, many more people would have access to and be involved with it. Another reason for opening the platform up was that IDII had used up its funding and was going to be shut down. By open sourcing the platform, they knew it would survive and would not be exploited by others. And then the team initially decided on a price of 30 US dollars for the board. And they also decided to make the board blue, which was different from most other boards at the time, which were green. Um, in the later parts of the presentation, you can see the actual picture of the board, which is actually blue and not the common uh, at the time, which is uh, green for the PCB. And then another design decision that helped add to the popularity of the board was giving it lots of input and output pins. And then initially, the team ordered 300 printed circuit boards to conduct a usability test. Um, if you're going to conduct the so-called usability test, uh, it's not just tested by the programmers itself or by the team. It will also be tested by prospective uh, clients. Uh, if this is feasible, if it is uh, really usable, is it really uh, it is is it really easy to use? So that's the usability test. And then shortly after this test, people began to hear about this board and wanted one for themselves. And then the project started to take off. However, it was still missing a name. Okay, up at that time, uh, the board does, doesn't have a name yet for branding. So while discussing the name, the team was having drinks at a local bar frequented by Massimo Bansi. The bar's name was Bar di Re Arduino, and the new board became known as the Arduino. And there are also um, trivia that the name Arduino is uh, from uh, the king of Italy. So, uh, but most frequently, the, uh, the origin of the name of the Arduino board came from the bar where Massimo Bansi and his team have frequented. So, so much for the history of the Arduino. So the question is, the next question is, what is the Arduino? So at the heart of the Arduino is the microcontroller. So what is a microcontroller? It is a standalone, single chip integrated circuit that contains a central processing unit, a read-only memory, random access memory, and various input-output buses. And then most Arduino boards use the Atmel 8-bit AVR microcontroller. The most popular of the Arduino set of microcontroller is the Arduino Uno R3, uses the Atmega 328 chip. This chip is an 8-bit risk-based microcontroller that features 32 kilobytes of flash memory with read-write capabilities, 1 kilobyte EEPROM or electrically erasable, programmable, um read only memory um ee prom means you can put data or you can put contents inside this chip or uh memory but then for you to delete it uh, the only medium that you could use is uh, using electricity and then co two kilobytes of static ram 23 general purpose io lines and 32 general purpose registers And then all the hardware and software that make up the Arduino platform are distributed as open source. Okay, this is an open source and licensed under the GNU Lesser General Public License or the LGPL or the GNU General Public License GPL. Since Arduino is an open source platform, you can see variations of Arduino made by different companies uh, actually it is not the term it is a pirated no because um as i've said 
Arduino is open source. So again, in our later discussions, you can see that there are generic boards produced from the design uh, from the Arduino board. Okay, since I've, as I've said that Arduino Uno R3 is the most popular Arduino boards available, so we're going to specifically um, scrutinize the Arduino Uno R3. So Arduino is an open source hardware and software platform that is incredibly powerful yet easy to use. Okay, so this is the actual picture of the Arduino R3. And then you can see the uh, parts. So we have many parts uh, included specifically for the analog in connectors from A0 to A5. And then for digital or PWM connectors, is which is from pin 0 up to pin 13. And then these all the uh, parts are discussed in the following slides. So what are the major components of the Arduino Uno? First is we have the DC supply unit or the direct current supply unit. The DC supply input can be used with an AC to DC power adapter or a battery. The power source can be connected using a 2.1 millimeter center positive plug. Uh, the Arduino Uno operates at 5 volts but can have a maximum input of 20 volts. However, it is not it is recommended to not use more than 12 volts. Uh, actually, the standard is 5 volts for Arduino. Uh, if I were you, I'll not be um, curious and um, and uh, uh, input a higher uh, voltage for the Ar Arduino board because maybe because of your curiosity, uh, your uh, your your Arduino will be uh, will be non-functional. Okay, next is we have the voltage regulator. So the Arduino uses a linear regulator to control the voltage going into the board. And then also we have the USB port. The USB port can be used to power and program the board. And then we have the reset button. This button when pressed will reset the board. And we have the ISP for U ICSP for USB. Uh, it's so-called the in-circuit serial programming pins are used to flash the firmware on the USB interface chip. And then we also have the ICSP for Atmega328. So again, the in-circuit serial programming pins are used to flash the firmware on the Atmega microcontroller. And then aside from that is we have the digital and PWM connectors. So these pins labeled, labeled from 0 to 13, as you could see in the previous picture of the Arduino Uno R3, can be used either as either a digital input or output pins. So the pins labeled with a tilde can be used for pulse width modulation or the PWM output. And then aside from digital, we also have analog in connectors. These pins labeled A0 to A5 can be used for analog input. These pins can be used to read the output from the analog sensors. And then we have the power and external reset. These pins in this header provide ground and power for external devices and sensors from the Arduino. The Arduino can also be powered through these pins. There is also a reset pin that can be used to reset the Arduino. And then the microcontroller, the Atme 80 Mega 328, the microcontroller for the Arduino Uno board. And then additional information with regards to Arduino Uno R3. The digital PWM analog in power reset connectors are collectively known as the pin headers. The pins in these headers allow the Arduino to communicate with external sensors and other devices. Okay, next is how are we going to power the Arduino or supply input voltage to it? So the Arduino can be powered in one of the three ways. First is through the Input voltage or ground pins. Actually, this is the uh, the least popular way to power the Arduino. The DC supply input port or the USB port. So first is we have using the input voltage or ground pins to power the Arduino. 
So the input voltage and ground pins in the power and external reset header can be used to power the Arduino with an external battery. It is not recommended to power the Arduino in this manner unless the user is looking for the most expensive and short-lived way to power the Arduino. As I've said, uh, this is the least popular way to power the Arduino. So six AA batteries in series can be used, but which, which will provide the same voltage as the 9 volts battery, but would give an approximately 4 times the capacity. So this is an image in which you can power the Arduino using the input voltage and ground. But I have, as I've said, this is the least popular way to power the Arduino. Okay, another one is using the DC supply input to power the Arduino. So the DC supply input connector can be used with an AC to DC power adapter or a battery to power the Arduino. The connector has a female 2.1 millimeter center positive plug. Okay, um, uh, you can notice female. Actually, uh, it's not being do, uh, lewd, but it's uh, actually this is a characteristic of all the wires. We have the male and female. Um, you can see later on the uh, picture, uh, why is it, is it called a female connector? Okay, you could, as I've said, we could use AC to DC supply power unit or an adapter. Okay, so it says that it is a female connector. Female connector be because it has a hole. So, meaning male collector connector is different from a female um, connector. Okay, then the, actually this is the most popular way to connect the Arduino to have um, an input voltage. So using the USB connector to power the Arduino. It is far the easiest and safest way to power the Arduino and the least expensive. It can be powered directly from the USB port on the computer. For example, um, when you are already in the stage of programming the Arduino, so it is always connected in the USB port of, uh, of the computer. So meaning, if it is connected, it automatically has already uh, its needed supply input voltage. Or you could use a USB rechargeable power bank. It can also be used for robotic or similar projects that need the mobility to move around. However, care is needed when connecting shields or other accessories to the Arduino that the USB connector can draw enough power. So the only uh, disadvantage of having this uh, USB connector is if the Arduino has too many shields and these shields has a separate um, input voltage, it can affect the overall supply uh, uh, the supply input voltage needed by the Arduino. Okay, this is an example that we can connect the Arduino using the power bank. But then again, as I've said, uh, USB uh, Arduino can be connected through the USB port of the computer. So it is also possible. And at, actually, it is also the most popular. Uh, this, is also you, uh, this is only used, for example, if you're going to deploy your project um, to be used already in a, a real-world situation in which, um, of course, if it's already installed, uh, you cannot uh, expect that the power source of your Arduino is still from the USB port of your computer. Okay, uh, we have already finished with the uh, Arduino, uh, specifically Arduino Uno R3. So next is we have the Arduino shields. So what are the shields? So Arduino shield is a modular circuit board that plugs directly into the pin headers of the Arduino board. So, these shields will add extra functionality to the Arduino board. Of course, Arduino has already, if you're going to install the right components, the, like, the, uh, the right electronic components, you could already use the Arduino depending on your need at your disposal. But then, if you want to add these extra features, such as, for example, um, wireless communication, Bluetooth, or any other um extra functionalities, then you really do need Arduino shields. Um, Arduino shields is equivalent in computer sense to, for example, cards, video card, 
So, that's the counterpart for Arduino. It is called shield. Actually, it's not a card. And then a shield fits on top of the Arduino by plugging directly into the pin headers. Then shield can also be stacked on top of another if they do not use the same resources. Then most shields usually have the great documentation as well, which makes programming them also very easy. And then, if there is an advantage, of course, extra functionalities for your Arduino project, the drawback to shields is they usually cost more than purchasing the components and connecting them to the Arduino with a breadboard. Okay, it is said that uh, Arduino shields tend to cost more compared to the actual Arduino board that you are going to use. And then some shields such as the Movi Speech Synthesizing and Voice Recognition Shield and the SparkFun XB Radio Module Shield add functionality that cannot simply be added as a single component. For fun a functionality like this, a shield or an external circuit board would be required. So that's another disadvantage. Because they're using a different resource from the actual Arduino board, they can require additional external circuit board. Specifically, if they... Uh, if if uh, if there's uh, input uh, su uh, input supply volt input voltage supply will not suffice the uh, coming from the USB connector. So these are the actual pictures of the um, Arduino shields available in the market. So this is a prototype shield. And then we have the movie shield, motor shield, and servo shields. And then because of the uh, vast um, functionalities or the vast usage, usage of Arduino Uno specifically, um, Arduino shields are um, manufactured for every needs of every hobbyist and electronics enthusiast and engineers. Okay, this is an example, as I said in the uh, lecture, that um, the shields can be stacked on top of the other. And then as you can see at the bottom, this is actually the Arduino microcontroller. And these two are shields that, are, that adds functionality to the actual Arduino board. Okay, next is we have the Arduino pin. There is a total of 31 pins in the Arduino pin headers. Most of these pins can be configured to perform different functions. So again, this is the picture of the Arduino R3. And then based on the color code, so we have for um, from this one is we have digital, then analog, then power, the pink one, then serial is the gray, then the SPI, and then the PWM. That's the cut up. The category of the Arduino pin can be used as digital, analog, power, serial, SPI, and PWM. Okay, next is we have digital pins. So the digital pins in the Arduino are the ones that are used the most when connecting external sensors. So these pins can be configured for either input or output. So digital pins can be input or output in nature. But then, if you're not go, if you're not going to declare it, um, by default, it is an input state. But then again, when we are using a pin for input, we do not need to explicitly declare them as input pins. But it is recommended that it is a good practice to do so because it will make it easier for someone reading the code to understand what the pin is being used for. So for documentation purposes of your Arduino sketch, it is better to explicitly declare that your um, digital pin is an input. And then, the digital pins will have one of two values. Okay, so that's why it is called a digital pin. Um, in electronics, it is called digital be because it only accepts two values. So we have zero and one. So zero is associated with low, with off, while one is associated with high or on. So for this one, high is 5 volts and low, which is, of course, 0 volts. Okay, if we do have digital pins, we also have analog input pins. 
So the Arduino Uno contains a built-in analog-to-digital ADC converter with six channels, which gives us six analog input pins. We have the A0 to A5. While the digital pins have two values, either high or low only, the analog input have input pins have values ranging from 0 to 1023 relative to the reference value of the Arduino. So the Arduino Uno has a reference value of 5 volts. So the analog input pins are used to read analog sensors such as range finders and temperature sensors. Okay, from 0 to 1023 values, um, this will, uh, if you're going to convert it into digital, you're going to map it from 0 to 5 volts to get the uh, corresponding values. And then the six analog pins can also be configured as digital pins, but of course, it, it can be used if it is um, programmed in an Arduino sketch. Next is we have the PWM pins, uh, where the analog input pins are designed to read analog sensors such, uh, for input. The PWM pins are designed for output. So, PWM is a technique for obtaining analog results with digital output. So, since a digital output can be either on or off, to obtain the analog output, the digital output is switched between high and low rapidly. So, the percentage of the time that the signal is high is called the duty cycle. So, let's we have an illustration of the duty cycle. So, again, duty cycle, its definition is... The percentage of the time that the signal is high or that the signal is 1 or that the signal is on. So for this one, we have a 50% duty cycle. Why? Okay, this one is high, 1 or on, this portion. And then the low, uh, if it goes down, it became, it becomes 0 or off or low. So it means 50% uh, fifty percent of the time it is high or on and then 50% it is off or low. And the next for 75% duty cycle, as you could already see, that 75% of the time it is on, high or one, and then it's 25% is the time it's spent that it is off, low or zero. And then 75% duty cycle is the opposite of the 25% duty cycle in which um, it, uh, it has only 25% of the time that it is high one or on and then 75% uh, of the time um, the signal is off, off, low or zero. Okay, next is we have the power pins. We have the input voltage or the VIN. Uh, this input is used when we power the Arduino board using an external power supply. And then we also have the ground. These are the ground pins. And then 5 volts. This is 5 volts out and is used to power most sensors. But next is we have a 3.3 volts. Okay, why do we have a 3.3 volts if we already have a 5 uh, volts pin? It is because Okay, why is it? Uh, this is 3.3 volts out and can be used to power sensors that are compatible with 3.3 volts to accommodate those sensors that operates only in 3.3 volts. So this, uh, this is why this pin is created. And then next is we have the reset. So this pin can be used to reset the Arduino board by an external source. And then next is we have the IO ref. This is the reference voltage for the board. For the Arduino, this will be 5 volts. Okay, next is we have the serial pins. So, these pins can be used for serial communication. So, the RX digital pin 0 is used to receive. Uh, RX is uh, mostly associated with the receiver. So, while TX is digital pin 1 is used to transmit. TX is mostly associated with the transmitter. So, these pins are connected directly to USB 2 TTL serial chip. And then one note, this pin should not connect directly to an RS-232 
232 serial port because this will damage the board. Um, RS-232 serial port actually is an, is an old serial port. It is found in uh, old motherboards. But then, um, actually, uh, you could... Uh, you don't need to have a problem with this because um, RS-232 serial port is already obsolete, specifically for, specifically for modern motherboards. And then next is we have the SPI pins or the serial peripheral interface pins are used for synchronous serial data protocol that is used by microcontrollers for communicating with peripheral devices. So this protocol always has one master with one or more slave devices. So we have the following terms. We have first this, we have the MISO or the MISO, the master in slave out pin is used to send data from the slave to the master device. So that's why it's called MISO. The data would be coming from the slave and then it will be transferred to the master device and the next is we have the opposite of MISO we have the MOSI or the MOSI the master out slave in the pin is used to send data from the master to the slave device so the data comes from the master device and then it is sent and or transmitted to the slave device and then we have the SCK or the serial clock synchronizes the data transmission and is generated by the master. And then we have the SS or the slave select pin tells the slave to go active or to go to sleep. This is used to select which slave device should receive the transmission from the master. As if read, as, as by definition of the SPI pins, there is one master and then there is one or more or there are one or more slave devices. By using slave select, we can specifically determine which uh, slave device will receive data from the master device. Okay, um, as far as we're concerned, we're already, I've, I've already only discussed Arduino Uno, but then again, there are also Arduino boards existing in the market. So these are also the uh, common uh, Arduino boards aside from Arduino Uno. So we have the Arduino Micro, the Arduino Mega 2560, the Lilypad, and the Arduino Nano. Okay, let's first tackle the micro, uh, micro version of the Arduino. So the Arduino Micro is the smallest board in the Arduino family. It is based on the Atmega 32U4 microcontroller. This board features 20 digital I.O. pins, of which 7 can be used for PWM output and 12 can be used as analog input. So the Micro and the Nano can be used for a project where the Arduino Uno may be too big. Um, later, I'll create a video in which you can see the actual size of an Arduino Uno. And then, so that you could compare how big or how small these other um, Arduino uh, boards are. Okay, next is we have the Arduino Mega 2560. So the Arduino Mega 2560 is designed for the most complex projects. So that's why it's called Mega. It contains more digital pins compared to Arduino Uno. So it features 53 digital I.O. pins. 16 analog input pins, and 15 PWM output pins. It also has four serial UARTs for serial connections. And if a user wants to create a complex project like a robot, the Mega is the board to start with. Okay, this is the picture of the Arduino Mega. Um, I want you to um, take notice of this, that uh, original Arduino boards are made in Italy. Of course, because that is the uh, origin or where, uh, where Arduino is invented. Next is we have the Lilypad. So the Arduino Lilypad is designed for wearable projects. Um, if you want to put an Arduino on your clothing, you cannot use the Arduino Uno because it's too rigid and all other um, Arduino boards. For you to have, um, for example, um, 
a spark on your clothing or a uh, uh, you have a technology in your clothing, you can use Lily Pad. So it can be soon into fabrics and use power supplies and sensors that are also so soon in the fabrics. So the Lily Pad is based on the Atmega 168V or Atmega 328V or the low power version. So this board features 16 digital I.O., 6 analog input pins, and 6 PWM outputs. So this is the Arduino lily pad. This is the board. And then for you to attach it to the clothing is this, uh, you can sew it using these holes. We have holes here. And actually this is very soft. Compared to other uh, Arduino boards, which is very hard because they are composed of um, uh, PCBs, um, Lilypad is flexible so that it can adapt to the uh, because it, uh, it is used for wearable projects. It is not good if it is rigid or very hard in texture. Okay, next is we have the Arduino Nano. So there are a lot of similarities between the Nano and the Micro. The Micro was released in 2012, while the Nano was released in 2008. So the Nano features 14 digital I.O. pins, 8 analog input pins, and 6 PWM output pins. So Nano is about the half the price of the Micro. And also, Nano is easier to obtain than the Micro because there are so many generic Nano boards. Okay, so we've tackled actually these are the original uh, Arduino boards produced in Italy. So next is we have generic boards. Why do this matter? Because as I've said, um, Arduino is an open source platform. So it's designed, uh, it's open to everyone. Um, they can duplicate it and they can customize it depending on their branding. So next, all the original hardware design files are released under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike License. So this license allows both personal and commercial deri derivatives of all the Arduino boards if they credit Arduino and release their design under the same license. So this uh, Arduino derivative, sometimes they have this Uino at the end of the name. For example, here in the Philippines, we have the Gizduino. Um, it is uh, manufactured by um, uh, another, um, uh, actually it's not semiconductor, but um, pr uh, that produces uh, electronic components. So this has led to many lower price generic boards. Okay, again, uh, it does not necessarily mean generic boards that they are uh, not functional. Actually, they function just the same with the uh, original Arduino board. Uh, but then, of course, because they're generic, they don't have these uh, brand names. Okay, so this is the, Ar uh, the clone. Actually, this is called clone because you can see the Arduino and then we have the uh, Uno. So, uh, I'll have a video to, uh, to, be, uh, to be recorded which uh, you can see the difference between a clone and an original Arduino board. Okay, this is another one for this is another um, clone of the Arduino Uno. And then this is um, produced specifically by Key Studio, their own Arduino board. And, of course, for branding, they've changed the color of their um, connectors, their pins, and then also the board, which is typically Arduino, is color blue, but then they make they made it black. And then, as you can see, this is already also a cloned Arduino Mega, as I've said uh, later, uh, previously on the, uh, the picture of the original Mega. It, it is uh, included, made in Italy, but for the um, clone, it is made in China. Okay, so the generic board, so the DF Robot Romeo BLE board is an Arduino compatible robot control board with Bluetooth LE 4.0. So, um, this is specifically a uh, an Arduino derivative 
or a clone, but they added additional features such as Bluetooth LE 4.0. Uh, for a typical Arduino board, for you to have Bluetooth, you have to buy a separate Arduino shield. But this board, they already uh, integrated a Bluetooth technology in it. So this board takes the design of the Arduino Uno and adds a number of extra features such as built-in Bluetooth and an integrated two-way DC motor driver. So this is the variation uh, which includes, as, uh, as in the previous slide, it has already a Bluetooth radio and a two-way uh, for uh, DC motors. Okay, so summary. So we already know about the history of the Arduino, what are the different Arduino boards, and different ways that the Arduino uh, boards can be powered using uh, input voltage ground, using AC-DC, and then last is using the USB connector. And then there's also a brief explanation of the various pin types included in an Arduino board. Okay, do you have any questions? Uh, if you do have any questions, clarifications, you can comment below or you can comment in our Google Classroom for additional learning so that if you do have questions so that I can respond to it. Okay, so thank you very much for listening.